Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Haley with HaleyWithHaleyWithTheFlare.com. I'm the owner and writer of this blog and I co-own the travel agency Travel With A Flare with my husband. And today we are bringing you another five things I love and hate, but today we are talking about the MSE World Europa. If you are new here, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and even hit that bell so that you are notified whenever we post a new video. I just recently sailed on the MSE World Europa in Europe over Easter break with my daughter and our friends and their kids and I am here to tell you the five things we hated and we loved. Now we all know that MSC kind of has this like up and down relationship with a lot of people and I am going to be posting a video on how MSC was actually a bit different in Europe than I found here in the Caribbean because I had done them once in the Caribbean technically Bahamas and I was not the biggest fan. It wasn't the worst experience but you know there's so many choices out there um, that I didn't think my path would cross back here. Um, then this sailing came up and it was a great price. And it was actually so cheap in comparison to doing US based or Caribbean based trips during this time. And it gave us another opportunity to head back to Europe. So figured why not? So like always, we are gonna start with the quote unquote worst first. So let's get started. All right, one of the most <laughs> annoying and crazy things that we did not like on the MSC World Europa was the elevators. They do the call system where you go over to the screen, you tap your floor and it says go to elevator A, B, C, D or F. I would say a good majority of our sailing, this was extremely time consuming. We were up on a really high deck with our rooms. So to come down to the main areas or go back up to our room, especially on port days, because, you know, in Europe, there's different people getting on the ships at different ports. It's not just everybody gets on in Barcelona. Um, it really clogged up the elevators and it took quite a bit of time. So that really wasn't our favorite thing. Number two, the lack of variety of food in the buffet. Now we had some picky eaters with us. Um, since we had Sense and Intensive uh, itinerary, we didn't do a lot of sit down, traditional sit down dining. Um, so we did a bit more buffet, which is not typically usual for us. And um, what we had in the buffet was very good most nights actually, probably better than our first MSC sailing. It definitely didn't have the variety that a lot of other lines have. Number three, now this is for those of you that need the extension cord for like a CPAP or something like that. Uh, MSC actually does a $30 deposit. You just can't request it apparently. They get stolen a lot on MSC ships, I'm guessing, which is why they have this policy. Um, you do get your money back after, but it was just kind of a little annoying. Not a deal breaker. You guys know I say that a lot, but um, it was something that was just a little annoying to get set up. And when we got to the room, it definitely wasn't in there. So we had to wait um, a good while for that to come in and get set up. Number four, we're going to talk room service fees and the food. Overall, for how much they charge for their room service, and the general food that's on that menu, it is not good. It's expensive and it's expensive for not great food. I will say when you order the pizza through room service, that is extra, but it's great. Um, but overall we found, we tried a variety of different things. Cause again, very poor intensive itinerary. Um, it just, it wasn't great. It definitely wasn't worth it. I guess if you're in like a yacht club suite where, you know, your room service is included, maybe that's not as big of a deal breaker, but it definitely was not a, cost and value um, equal situation for us. Number five would be the sit down service. We did do the steakhouse one night. We did do Mexican at one point. And the service, although it was great, people were very kind. It was very slow. Like the steakhouse, we were there well over two and a half hours. And that is just a, a long, a long night. And I know that like my ADHD kicks in <laughs> when it starts getting that long. Um, the food was great at both those venues. Really good, actually. It was much better than I was surprised. I was very surprised is the gist of it. But um, it just, it definitely took way too long. Now, if you were able to catch me on a live, I was very pleasantly surprised by the World Europa. It is a stunning ship. And I liked it a lot better than I thought I was. So let's get started with the things that we loved about the MSC World Europa. Number one is the thermal spa. So we were in a premium Aria suite, which meant we had access to the thermal spa included in our room. And this is probably the best thermal suite on the ship. I would say the only thing that I wish I could have switched is the Enchanted Princess, if you watched on my channel. 
has like this rainfall and their pool that's in the middle of their thermal suite. And I liked that a little better and it was a little deeper. This thermal spa had so many different things. Number two is the tea room. The Ralph Polo tea room on board is just incredible. I ended up spending a lot of time in there. I worked in there a little bit. The afternoon tea service is fantastic. They have afternoon tea starting for around $10 per person, and it is worth every cent. You get well enough food. The tea option and varieties are great. We just loved this venue. Three, this is gonna tee into that, but the variety of bar venues, you know, same line as having a tea room. There was a gin bar, there was a pub on board that actually brewed its own beer. Um, the pizza burger venue, I know that's not a bar, but like there was just some really great themed um, venues on this ship. The coffee shop on the, I always wanna call it the boardwalk, but on the back of the ship that has the different coffee smellings, tastings. It's, it's truly incredible. They did a really great job with venues on this ship. Number four is the rooms. So we had two premium Aria suites for the adults side by side. And then the girls shared an interior room. And I will tell you that interior room and our rooms, those are some of the most well-appointed stateroom cabins I've seen on any cruise line I've set. Um, from them setting out, you know, even the mat on the beds on embarkation day, so you're not getting dirt on your beds the amount of storage, the spacing. We were really pleasantly surprised. Like we had more storage than we even knew what to do with in our room. Like even if we had Olivia, my daughter in there, we still would have had some storage left. Like if you go look at the room tour, like our room had a king bed, a sleeper bed and bunk bed. So you could sleep six in that room, which is very uncommon for a cruise room category. But um, these rooms were just truly incredible. The balconies were great. They open up, loved them. Number five is the ship layout. We really, really loved the way that this ship was laid out, like throughout their um, main gallery area in the middle of the ship. There were different small entertainment venue, um, entertainment sessions going on. It wasn't too loud. I've been on other ships like the Celebrity Apex where that central area is just so loud and deafening. Um, but the variety of restaurants, the shops, the bars, the tea room um, was really incredible. I, I, I This is probably one of the best laid out ships I've ever been on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions on that, please let me know down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.